Hello and welcome to the Wicked Things Podcast. Today's story is called Small Town Terrors. Locals have always gathered at the little roadside diner to share a cup of delicious coffee and usually some small town gossip. But there is something very different in the tales being shared today. Dan nervously placed the thick black hood over his head with his blood-stained hands, as instructed by the man with the revolver. Worry filled his thoughts that this would be his last moments on earth. He lowered his head and exhaled deeply. He felt the hard round barrel press firm against his left temple. Dan closed his eyes and recalled the week before as he sat at his kitchen table with his laptop, searching for a means to get an unsecured loan to get him out of debt. He raised the pile of overdue bills and threw them across the kitchen table. He noticed the Dear John letter his wife left him that morning before leaving with the kids. Tears welled up in his eyes as he realized just how badly she had screwed him. She emptied their bank account and had been lying for months about the payments of the mortgage and utilities. He knew he had mere hours before everything he had worked his whole life, including his parents' home, in which he and his family lived, would be taken from him. Dan lowered his head and fell asleep as the feelings of hopelessness took hold of his soul. Sometime later, he was awoken by the sounds of, You have mail. Half asleep, he raised his eyes to see what was going on. He immediately spotted the new email entitled, What would you do for money? He smiled and opened the email. Why not? He figured. Dan read through the email, pausing only to rub his eyes and yawn. It promised up to $100,000 for a promise to perform an unknown favor at a future date. Knowing he would need the money to save his parents' house and to fight his wife in court for his children, he replied, an acceptance to the request as long as it is real. The money arrived 24 hours later in his account. He was not sure who they were or what they would want, but his attention shifted to his children. He returned to work in the restaurant kitchen the next day. Dan was a focused cook, one that other employees knew not to disturb as he worked. It was a busy Friday night, and Dan was in full panic mode when Sherry, the shift supervisor, would pull him off the cook line. You have a phone call? Sherry stated, showing her disapproval of the phone being used for personal calls. I'm sorry, Dan mouthed the words to Sherry as he turned his attention to the phone. Hello? The voice of a man. Tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Dan looked confused and asked, Who is this? The man on the other end hung up. Sherry looked concerned, seeing Dan's bewilderment. Okay? Dan nodded, holding a deep look of confusion. Yeah, I think. He walked past Sherry and returned to work. The next day, Dan could not rest. He nervously cleaned his parents' house and talked with several attorneys about his wife. At 8 p.m., he waited next to the telephone in his front room as he looked through photos of his wife and children. The phone rang and he jumped. It rang again, and he stared at it. It rang a third time, and he reached out, answering the phone's call. Outside, the man on the phone said and hung up. Dan looked outside and saw a shiny new black four-door sedan waiting. A tough-looking bald man, dressed in a black suit and long coat, standing next to the open rear passenger door. Dan locked his front door behind him and approached the car cautiously. The man motioned to Dan to get in the car. Dan was followed into the sedan by the man in the dark suit. "'What is this all about?' Dan asked. The only response was the man handing him a thick black hood. Worry crossed Dan's face. "'You want me to—' The man nodded his head, and Dan did as they instructed him. Dan was not sure how long they drove, but the car finally stopped and Dan slowly removed the hood. The man nearly pulled him out of the car and shoved a large manila envelope into his hands. He examined the package and found on the front the words, Open Inside Room 3. He looked to the man for more answers. The man pulled a revolver and pointed for Dan to follow the instructions. The building was an abandoned motel in the middle of nowhere. He walked across the overgrown parking lot to room three. The man escorted Dan to room three and opened the door. Dan followed him inside. 
The smell of mold from the rotting drywall assaulted his nose as the flickering light from the bathroom caught his attention. The man closed the door and motioned to the package. Dan opened the package. Inside the package, Dan found a box cutter, rubber gloves, and a gallon-sized Ziploc bag. Dan looked to the man at the door. What am I supposed to do with this? The man raised his eyebrows and motioned to the open package. Dan looked inside and found a single piece of folded notebook paper. He unfolded it and discovered a single word written on it. Kidney. Dan looked to the man in fear. It was asking him to remove his own kidney. The man shook his head and pointed to the bathroom door. Dan turned and opened the bathroom door. What he found inside was a bound, homeless man lying face down in a tub of ice with his shirt removed and an X drawn on his lower back. Dan turned to face the man. You're kidding, right? The man pulled his revolver and shook his head. Okay, okay. Dan raised his hands. Just don't kill me. The man motioned to the bathroom with the pistol, and Dan obeyed. Dan knelt down next to the man in the tub. The man was wide awake and begging through his gag for Dan. Don't do it! He pleaded over and over. Dan took a deep breath and stood. The feeling of the pistol pressing interrupted his movements against his head, gave him pause. Dan lowered his head. The homeless man cried out as the man with the pistol smiled. Moments later, the deed was done, and Dan was shaken by what he had forced him to do. His mind was reeling from his experience, and his body shook as he looked at his hands covered in the homeless man's blood. The man with the pistol smacked him across the face, jarring him out of his shock. Dan glared at the man, who motioned to Dan to put the hood back on. Dan nervously placed the thick black hood over his head with his blood-stained hands, as instructed by the man with the revolver. He worried that this would be his last moments on earth. He lowered his head and exhaled deeply. He felt the hard round barrel press firm against his left temple. That's it for today. Come back later for the next episode of Small Town Terrors or to check out one of our other tales. Until then this is the Wicked Things Podcast signing off.